Greetings, Internet. This is Smear Navaria, and today I will be covering reflecting bullets off of walls. This involves going off the sides and or going off the top. So without further ado, I'm going to open Don Foot, and I'm going to be um, using my Kanako uh, folder because Kanako has an attack that involves that kind of stuff. So without further ado, I'm going to copy over a non-spell. Okay. So I'm going to go to it in Don Makfu. I mean, there's nothing there yet, but there will be soon. And I need to rename that to something more helpful. Oops. Brightness, brightness. Okay. And I'm just going to wipe everything else here. And no, I'm not going to wipe. I'm just going to rename things. Um, attack. Well, I, attack task is pretty generic. And I'm just gonna wipe everything in that. Uh, okay. Remove everything else. Task bullet command reflect sides object. I'm just going to set these up in advance because I know I'm going to be using them, and yeah. So now I'm going to obtain graphics, or rather the IDs of graphics, and I'm going to use 83 and 87. 83 and 87. That's going to come in handy later. So now I'm going to first start with a basic reflection. Let... well, this is boring. Um, Loop 12 times, loop 6, oh no, um, yeah, first string, I'm gonna put it in the loop, that way I can have an arrow loop. I'm just, I'm just going to put this as a random angle. Is it going to increment? Nah, 17 is better. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter in the end. It will be tweaked later. Reach the eight, shot A1, get enemy X. Speed, 2, angle, angle T. Graphic, um, 83. Um, delay. I times Three, I'll just say. Okay, that'll create the ascent and angle T plus equals 300 since you got the six. And, and I'm gonna do something interesting ish here. So basically, that's gonna happen. And I'm gonna say that by I. So it gives the appearance that each string is basically like has a curve ish when each bullet gets shot. I'm not gonna tell, well, I'm gonna set that this to object and then I'm going to fill in this with what we know. So to understand bullet reflection, basically for the left side, your angle is basically going to be some angle, probably greater than 90 because it's heading towards the left side. And it's gonna reflect off of the wall. And if you try a, draw a line perpendicular to the wall, the path that the bullet takes before hitting the wall and going af and after hitting the wall, the angles to that perpendicular are going to be equal. So, from by doing math, you can figure out that the angle it comes off at is 180 minus the angle it came in at, and the same goes for the right side. So, using this, first I'm going to say if while rather while the bullet exposition is 
less than, greater than zero, and is also less than the stage frame width. Yield. In other words, it's not going to do anything in between the two ends. And now we can implement the reflection. So now I'm going to fill in this. Basically, while it's doing in between the X bounds, it's not going to do anything. But when it hits those X bounds, if object move get X object is less than zero or equal to zero. I'm going to first set its position to zero, which will involve any discrepancies where it's like on the other side or whatever. Actually, that's not necessary, so I'm just going to count that out for now. But you can do that. It will probably help a little bit, but not much. And then, object move, set angle. We're just going to set our theta too. Object, object move, get angle. This is our original angle. And it's going to be 180 minus that. So, I'm going to actually, now I'm going to tell this. Well, I have to do the other side first. Wait a second. Greater than or equal to get stitch frame width. I keep on running state instead of STG. Bad habits. Okay. I'm going to tell the actual bullet to do that. And why does it say st Oh. Ah, I didn't forget. And... Did they tell her to attack? Oh. And yay, they're reflecting. And I died. As you can see, um, they were reflecting off in that pattern. Okay, I'm dying again. This is bad. I'm gonna save now. Okay, man. Um, now I'm going to implement this, which doesn't really matter, and I'm going to send angle into the thing. Hopefully, this will do something that I want to do. And now, instead of being jagged, all of our bullets are somewhat in the same pattern. And this magic is because each one has a different angle, so they will obviously reflect off of the walls in a different way. And because they, oh, they, oh, they all have different, the same speed, but when they hit the wall, they will hit it at a different X position. So this counts for all um, greater than zero, so everything less than or equal to zero, including 0 0.0001, or negative 0 0.0001, etc. Those are all possible places for the bullet to turn. So th these lines will normalize it to the actual wall. And then by using angle T, which is the angle of the first bullet, all of them will have the same angle going off, instead of reflecting off and spazzing everywhere. And that's one technique you can use to make sure that your things are pretty which is important sometimes. And now, important, important. <sighs> Effects are important sometimes. Wh why is this take? Uh, I'm going to just And count is greater than equal to zero, okay. That's better. And now it looks more like ish, conical ish, I guess. So I have some things I want to fix to make this look slightly better. I right, times three halves. You can fill around with whatever you have to make it look better, I guess. This looks not. This is bad ish for some reason. I want to fix that. 
Okay. Anyways, QED. So I'm just gonna copy over the code from here first as a starter. And then we're gonna look at the case for the top. The top actually has a complete turn case. And this one's actually easier to understand. So basically, your initial angle is measured in this gigantic near 360 degree thing. It bounces off of the top, and as, this, as before, the angle here is the same as the angle here. What's notable about this one is that the angle that you, when it hits this point, it hits the wall, if it had continued going straight, the angle would have been made with a horizontal would have been equal to the angle it originally started out with. And because this is also the reflection of this, all you had to do is negate the initial angle. So, why does it say that? This is not supposed to be there. Why? I guess it forgot to change something. Let me change it. Uh... Yeah, I should have checked that beforehand. But... Okay then. Pardon the net stupid error. I, f I should export that so I don't forget about it. Okay. And now... We have another case... To Oops, wrong button. And get Y is greater than zero. Also you. So you wanted to do only one of the, t the um, reflections, probably. So I'm going to put the, turn this into an if else. Else, if object move, get y object is less than or equal to zero. And I'm going to copy this. Angle negative, angle, negative angle t or negative one times angle t for more clarity. Um, set y to zero. And if I tell it to reflect QED, oops, Q'd. Um, <laughs> oops. Looks like I forgot something important. And now the ones at the top are also reflecting off. And that's basically all you have to do to have bullets reflecting. So, it's time to review what we have here. For reflecting off of the sides, the final angle is going to be 180 minus initial angle. For reflecting off of the top, it's going to be negative 1 times initial angle. And of course, by setting um, or the reflection angle based off the original angle of the first bullet, in case you are using like a m number of bullets that have different initial angles, and by setting a position so that they all start out at the same point, you can basically normalize a bunch of stuff. If you come all this stuff out. Then you end up with basically the same thing except jagged. And yeah. To make things look prettier, you probably don't want that jagged edge. And that's basically it. So this is Spare Neveria, and I hope this tutorial was helpful. See you next time.